This is Brent with Lycans Motorsports, and you are looking at um, all the, the shiny bits for the 311 cubic inch small block Ford. Custom race tech pistons. Um, if I haven't mentioned it before, these are very custom to use a 5700 length rod. It's a 990 compression height. Um, the wrist pin, <laughs> People, people usually balk, oh, the wrist pin bore intersects the uh, the oil oil rail uh, groove. Well, this one almost intersects the second ring, but uh, no worries. And um, good uh, 40, 32, oh, these may be 26, 18, so I'll have to look. Uh, but uh, vertical gas ports, good quality pieces, uh, wrist pins to go with them. Uh, oil rail supports, wire locks, and our octet of R and R custom rods. So, for this video, we're going to do some piston rod assembly. Okay, these for uh, these are for sure forty thirty two uh, material, one milli one millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeter ring pack, and pretty light. A little under 400 grams. Um, if you if you're not familiar with oil rail supports, uh, it is for situations where um, the wrist pin intersects the the oil rails, and uh, these just kind of wind around and sit in that groove and uh, serve as a basically a, a supporter or a floor for your oil rings to sit on. They do have a little um nub that sticks up i'm trying to focus guys um and that goes down and it goes it needs to end up right here in the wrist pin bore so that it can't spin so i'm gonna go through and i'm gonna get all those supports on oh make sure you clean them they're dirty i actually forgot about what i just said um if i put the oil rail supports on uh, the wrist pin on these particular pistons will not slide in. So um, we're going to go on to putting uh, wire locks in. I usually do one side, and then what will have to happen is we'll get our rods mounted, then the other wire lock, and then our support rails can go on. If you're not familiar with how, how to put on uh, wire locks, I do have another video that I made a couple years ago specifically for that. Okay, we got all of our wire locks in on one side. Wrist pins are clean. And uh, on a Ford, um, just pay attention to which side of the rod has the flat face and which side has the chamfer. The chamfer always goes towards um, the cheek of the crankshaft on a Ford. Uh, this chamfer always goes to your right. So mounts on the piston just like this. So, so we lube up our wrist pin, lube up our, lube up our um, bores, and uh, slide those things in, and then put our wire locks in on the other side. All right, so let's go through some assembly here. Got our piston, the valve reliefs going to the top of the engine. Wrist pin, connecting rod, chamfer to the right, got some nice slimy 50 weight Lucas oil. Like I said, I'll post up the um, the video of how to do wire locks, but it is uh, 
It's pretty simple, just like that. And there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna turn attention back to the block real quick. And uh, as I mentioned uh, in, in the other video, I still have um, a restrictor to put in. And I am gonna uh, match the, the hole in the block to the oil pump. So I'll gasket match this hole. It doesn't need much. You can see how I've marked it. So I can take the high grinder and open that up. The biggest issue is that hole down inside has a very sharp edge and it's almost like a 90 degree turn there. So if you use a die grinder with a ball on the end of it, you can come and you can radius that hole. All right, kind of hard to see, but that's the finished uh, result that is not any longer a, a 90 degree, it's a, it's a radius. Um, like anything else, you want to do a rough cut and then a finish cut. So I usually come in with a die grinder and shape it and then come back with a cartridge roll and smooth it out. All right, uh, there's, since I don't have the crank, there's really not much I can do. Uh, I plan on filing the rings, gapping the rings, but I hate doing that, so I'm going to put it off. Um, I got a really nice uh, piston ring grinder, and it makes quick work of it but uh it's just tedious and, and i've never been a fan of it so i'm gonna take a break right now and i'm gonna knock in the cam bearings i'm gonna use some of these uh, calico coated uh, durabond bearings and um i just like using coated bearings on, on all my engines where when i can just makes for a really nice bearing surface it looks just like they're made in the rod bearings all right, so let's get these knocked in. Okay, one thing you'll learn when you work on the 289 and 302 stuff, the small block stuff, there's not a lot of room down in the cam tunnel uh, in between the cylinders, so you kind of have to feed the cam bearing in um, kind of sideways and get it going down in there and then uh, get your cam bearing tool uh, coming in from, from the front. So, as always, line up the hole with the, the hole in the main saddle and drive her home. You can use a pin light to see where your grooves are in relation to the hole. I'll give her another little tap a tap. We should be good. Four more to go. All right, here's that front cam bearing. You notice my hole lines up here. Got a good uh, engagement on that hole. And then I usually set them back about 15 or 20 thousandths uh, underneath the face of the thrust plate. All right, so we have a new uh billet core solid roller camshaft um when i put cam bearings in uh always do a test fit and it's usually not an issue with um brand new blocks and the windsors but on engines like uh, the fe where the machining processes just weren't that good back in uh the early and mid 60s um, it's usually a handful to try to get the cam bearings fit and the cam to rotate freely and it's not uncommon to have to work on those bearings for an hour or so all right so i jinxed myself and uh, i thought we wouldn't have any problems but when the cam got all the way in, um, it was too hard to turn. So now I'm gonna knock um, one bearing out at a time and see if I can find the guy that's caused me all the problems. Okay, so I have some rather crude methods <laughs> of uh, 
making cam bearings work that I probably shouldn't show on YouTube, so I won't. Uh, otherwise, you guys would be thinking that I'm nuts. But um, here's here's what we're dealing with now. As you remember, it wouldn't turn before. Now I can't keep it from sliding to the back. This is very, very minimal effort. Whoa, okay. So got that done and I'm very pleased with that and we can go forward. By the way, if you do run into a situation at home where you are knocking cam bearings out and knocking them back in to try to find an offender, um, you'll probably notice that after about the second or third lick of putting those back in, they don't feel as tight as, as what they did on the first time and that's normal. What I normally do is when I put them in for the final time, I'll cover uh, the back side of the bearing a little bit with some green Loctite. Green Loctite is a sleeve retaining compound. And what that does is it uh, helps, uh, well, it'll hold that bearing in for sure. And uh, I even do that on my aluminum block motors because when aluminum gets hot, it expands and sometimes, um, you lose press fit on your cam bearings when you do that. Some factory blocks, aluminum blocks, have the cam bearings pinned to keep them from turning. Um, what I usually do is put the green Loctite on, never had a problem. Okay, so here's another thing I like to do on higher performance builds. Um, I will check the cam bearing clearance just like I would main and rod bearing clearance. So, uh, I just mark the front journal on this cam. It's a two inch and 81 thousandths even. And I've got my uh, bore mic set to this. And if I can get out of the hole on the camera. Oh my goodness. All right. Um, so I am setting at right at 2000 clearance on, on that front journal. Um, if it weren't a coated cam bearing, I would uh, open that up a little bit, but um, with the coating and everything, I'm, I'm good with that. I'll check uh, a couple more bearings and see how we go. If I do get into a spot where I think that I'm gonna need a little bit more clearance, it's easy to just polish those off the cam journals like you would a crank. All right, so we've come down to uh, my most favorite part. That was very facetious uh, filing rings. I don't know why I hate filing rings. I just don't like it, but I'm using some Mali um, 1.0, 1.02 millimeter, uh, standard tension. Um, got a Napier second. And um, I don't know if I'll get into much of, of this on video, but uh, there's no gap. If there is, it's just, you can see just a little bit of daylight, so maybe uh, four or five thousandths, but uh, all these need to be gapped. Um, I usually try to run on uh, a pretty hot uh, street motor or race motor. Well, I, I'm not gonna give any specifics. Um, it, it just varies on application to application. On this particular build, um, probably run five thousandths per inch of bore on the top ring and five and a half thousandths per inch bore on the second ring. So um, I'm gonna get to work on those and um, I'll probably sign off here because I absolutely hate filing rings and I just wanna get it done. So uh, thank you all for, for watching another video and uh, hopefully you pick something up that will help you in, in your build at home. And um, hope you have a good weekend. Uh, spring is coming, thank goodness. And um, ready for the sunshine and the warmer temperatures and uh, to get out and, and do some stuff. So um, have a good weekend. Enjoy your week. And I'll see you next week.